Hi, everyone. So welcome to another podcast with Tom and Harry, where we're going to be talking about pretty much everything within SMMA. We're going to be talking about sales, um, talking about all the different things that go into running a marketing agency or any kind of business, to be honest. Um, And we're going to cover a lot of ground as we normally do. So I think we'll just kick things off with, we'll go, well, I think we can kick things off, Harry, with a question, a DM we've had over the last few days. I know you've been asked, I'm starting my own agency, like what is realistic for me? And I think we get that question a lot. Like, what would you say if someone says to you, like, what is my, how, how quick can I earn the good money? And that, and we'll talk about what the good money looks like. Cause I think that has dramatically gone out of, um, kind of got out of hand, but what would you say is realistic? Someone starts an agency tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. They, they get a mentor course or they even, you know, a mentor's course or they even go on YouTube and, and like gorge on content with all the people that are on there. What is the expectation that you would set to them? So I think the expectations of starting an SMA in 2022, moving into 2023, it first of all really depends if you know what you're doing. If you're going in, sending the complete wrong messages, don't know how to handle cold calls, don't know how to handle meetings, don't have a clear process, then you're not going to sign a client. And that was me when I first started, didn't sign a client for six months because I had no idea what I was doing. When I did find out what I was doing, and if you and you and if you find out what you were doing, there's no reason why you can't sign two to three clients within three to four months and be making up to around three, you know, three and a bit thousand dollars per month. Not saying that's going to happen to everyone. Not everyone's going to stick to their targets. Not everyone knows what they're doing. And then on the other end of that, there's going to be people that say, someone's bound to comment on this thing. I scaled my agency to 10 K within three months. Yes. I'm sure you did. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm sure you did, but that's not realistic for everyone. So if you stick to your targets, you listen to what, you know, people, the blueprint that works for you and I and other people that are successful, there's no reason why you can't get there. Um, some of the bad expectations you've got to handle a lot of rejection you're going to have have to put in really long hours especially if you've you you know you've got a day job as well you're going to be working before work after work late hours at night probably at your lunch break if you want to get meetings at certain times so it's going to be stressful there um you're going to manage your own work that's a positive and a negative if you're not very good at kind of being consistent and structured and kind of self-aware enough to know that you have to work and you can't just lounge about they're kind of the biggest ones for me and then in terms of getting to like the 10k mark there's no reason why you can't get to there within a year the same that you got to three three or four months after three or four months you earn three and a bit thousand dollars do you agree with that i do i think what i will say is if you're looking at starting a social media marketing agency digital agency however you want to call it you can absolutely get to 10,000 a month. I know people call that's kind of like a, a people use that term a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, you can get to t- earning 10K a month or even 5K a month and even 20K a month. And people will say, well, do I need to outsource that work to get there? And the answer is no, you do not need to do that because to get to 10K a month, really that's 10 clients at a thousand dollar retainer a month. Let's say, for example, you can handle 10 clients. You you really can. And if you can, and that's by doing all the work. There's yes, it's a lot of managing. You have to be kind of organized, but you'll get you'll find your feet with that. But you can definitely keep clients, win clients, grow them, and handle 10 that pay you that type of fee. And that's ten thousand dollars a month with very, very massive profit margins. Um and it's incredibly fun. Like I, we, we don't talk about this that often, but me and you love our jobs. We love yeah. having a digital marketing agency because A, we love and adore our clients. We, we bend over backwards for them and we've got fantastic relationships with them. And they're actually, in some ways, they're long friends of ours. They will be. Yeah. Um, but we love the people we work with. Me and you have a, you know, work incredibly hard with each other, but we love doing the actual job, like looking at and analyzing data um, and seeing what's working, what doesn't work. And when you hit winning ad sets or you hit, you hit winning creatives and you and not just that, let's say you start seeing ad, you know, ad to carts go up, purchases go up, leads coming in when this client wasn't getting that, the reward feeling you get 
is, is the same feeling as when you initially win that client. So say you win that client at a thousand dollar retainer, you will get a huge buzz from that. You will feel amazing. You get the same buzz when you start seeing leads come in and more add to carts, more add to uh, more purchases for this e-com brand. And it is fun. Um, but you've hit the nail on the head. Like it is long hours. It's not set up your agency and then kick it in Starbucks for three hours a week, uh, three hours a day, and then do your own thing. You have to really put it in. When you get to a higher level and you and you're more established, yes, you can take a bit more of the business of, of your time back from the business. You can then the flexibility comes into play then where you can work till two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning if you want, and then sleep all day. It's kind of up to you. But yeah, you can definitely you don't need to outsource so you can like you say, you can, it is achievable to get to 10k a month. Definitely. Yeah. I think people 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 want to scale immediately. They start their agency and yeah. right, right, I'm gonna scale. But at certain, and this is going against so many people's opinions in the space. Like people go on Instagram and say, this person says the complete opposite. This person says the complete opposite. But this is what we've done. It's what we teach. And this is what we wholeheartedly believe is the right way to do it. Manage your own clients. Learn how to run Facebook ads. Learn how to get clients results for your first 10 clients to get to 10K a month. And then hire someone in-house that you can manage. Rather than just saying, right, someone in a foreign country, you manage my clients, you be responsible for the ad spend and I'll just sit back and relax. It's the wrong way to do it. One, you're not going to get many referrals because you're not the person actually delivering the results. A lot of the time people will say you get to the person they're outsourcing the work to, you get on the client meetings and explain the results. So even if they were doing good, they're the ones that are going to get the referrals, not you. You're just sat back twiddling your thumbs. Yeah. You've got to scale in the right way and you've got more importantly, you've got to do it at the right time just just wait and and there's no point someone messaged me the other day saying i sign clients for a thousand and i pay uh i pay someone who i outsource the work to 700 dollars per client so for every client he signs he only gets 300 so like to get to to get to 2k a month 3k a month he's got to sign 10 clients take away all your expenses that is yeah. so much work for you. Like it doesn't make any sense. Whereas I you just think, do all the work for, uh, you know, work 15 hours a week and you've got 10 K. Then you can hire someone for 3 K. You keep seven and someone's, you can manage someone and train them. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be people watching this going, no, that's not right because I've done it this way. And I, I, I outsource all the time. I think going back two years ago, you can outsource to, to, you know, to different countries at a much lower cost. That those days have that I can absolutely hand on heart say those days have gone. Yeah, um, and because, you, because you have to, yeah, yeah, because clients come to us and say that in the yeah. meetings we've had people say you're you're not going to outsource the work outsource the work are you? I want someone who I can have yeah. regular contact with. Like the, we've got the deal over the line because they we've said no, you can message us at any time of day, give us a call any time of day, and we'll give you an update on the ads. Clients don't want to say hi Harry, can you update us on the ads? And you go no, sorry, wait a week. I'm going to get in contact with my person, find out what's happening and get back to you. A week's gone. You spend an extra thousand in ad spend and they don't have a solid update. They don't want I, that. I've never seen a successful agency outsource work and keep clients. I've never seen it. It Me doesn't neither. exist. I think they lose them incredibly quickly. We've taken business off agencies at a rapid rate where they've that the agency they've been working with have outsourced the work to uh, to a different country at much lower cost taking the the a to, you know a skim off the top and actually let's get things in perspective here is if you are giving the work to someone else to do and you found this person on fiverr or on upwork or whatever platform you want to find this other individual the there is an element then of you having to manage them you have to get in a slack group probably or there'll be some ch the communication channel that you're using and you'll you'll have you'll be having to go back and forth because your client will be asking you lots of questions what's the click through rate tom why are we not got this leads amount of leads coming through what have you done about changing the location on our ads like we asked you to do on monday oh and you're having to go back and forth that the amount of time that you take going back and forth with someone in a different country running ads for a person that they don't know, you might as well do it yourself. And, and this is, but I get why people do it because they think I can give this work to someone who knows how to do things better than me, potentially, because I don't think they will do, but th this person can do it better for me. 
and I didn't have to do any of the work. It's marvelous. No, but you do have to now manage the client, manage the communication and keep them. And actually keeping clients in SMMA is harder than it is than getting them. And that is honestly something which people don't understand. Well, pe people forget if you keep a client, if you get a client for three months and you keep them for another three months, that's, that saves you all of the outreach to find a new client. That's literally like signing a new client. So why, but pe so why do people not focus on keeping them as much as getting new ones? I don't understand that. Why that's not keep so your client for a year? I'd rather keep a client for a year than have to worry about signing a new client four times in a year. That's so true. Yeah. I, but I it know. sounds, why does that sound revolutionary? It's, but, but not, it's not, but it's the way so... you, it's, Harry, it's the way you say that, that you've made that so abundantly clear to people who are watching this that, you know, they need to wake up and realize that you need to treat your clients like gold, bend over backwards for them, go that extra mile. If it means you've got to add, let's say, add some social media management onto it. Let's say you're posting for them twice a week. Cause and if, you, if, you, if you're adding maybe a little extra service here and there, not charge them any more for it, you're gonna, they will be so happy with you and feel they're getting so much more value from you. And it won't take up much more of your time that you'll keep them. And like you've just perfectly said, perfectly said, like why sign five different ones in a year? We can just keep the same one yeah. and have a reoccurring income for the next like 12. Yeah, it baffles my brain, mate. It really does. I can't remember what I was going to say now. I had a thought on the tip of my tongue about, I can't remember what it was, you know, when you get a mind blank. I th well, the one thing I want to, like, I think, well, I think in this episode, in this podcast, I would like to quickly touch on your journey, right, and my journey together, because we get asked all the time, like, how do yeah, we start? Yeah, how we actually... Like, you, yeah, you've done it. You've posted on this before, and we've talked about it before. But I, I just want to quickly, over the next two minutes, tell you my personal journey of SMMA and how I became from not even having a Facebook account. I wasn't even on Facebook to now earning the money we earn having such a successful marketing agency. I was in sales in, a, in three years ago. I was in sales and kind of marketing to a degree because I was working with the marketing department. But I was predominantly a salesperson. OK, I enjoyed my job the job I was in I won't mention them the job I was in I loved and I had a I really enjoyed it I had a company car you know I was on 50 grand a year like really enjoyed it I then got fired from that job um which I'm happy to talk about quite openly um it, it was the middle of a, it was the start of the pandemic and I was unfortunately the casualty of being cut back they 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 were panicking as a business and they need to get rid of staff. And I get that. So I was one of the first on the chopping board with the highest salary in that place, one of. So the first person to go was little Tom Ford. So I was fired, redundant, without redundancy pay, all this sort of stuff. So I then find myself as a guy who is has got two kids, right? And I need to make money. I need to make money somehow in the middle of, you know, at the very start of, of 2019. Um, I knew I need uh, that this was something I was interested in. And I found a couple of people online that I started following. Okay. One of them was actually Harry in, <laughs> in, <laughs> in the sense that I was following his Instagram when he had sort of two and a half thousand followers, 3,000 followers on Instagram. And his content was so intriguing that I thought, you know, this is really super interesting. And this guy's a, a, a young dude. He's doing well. Um, so I started to investigate it. I bought a course off someone. Um, and actually the course, now I look back on it, the course was a seven out of 10. It was, a, it was pretty good. Um, gave me lots of things I needed, but also didn't cover a fuckload of things. There was things he, this person missed, didn't talk about and I was scraping around the internet to try and find answers over time to cut that this story short I then realized that I could start a marketing agency register it legally with the government as a, a limited company and I thought my experience in sales will get me through this all I've got to do is apply what I already know but I'm just offering now a different service so I created my business went on Fiverr and got a logo registered it with the UK um, and then 
didn't have a website. I didn't think at first, didn't think a website was needed and I still don't. Um, learned very much like you've just said in a previous episode, like learn how to do meta ads as an initial one. I'll learn the rest at another time. And I thought if I can get to grips and understand lead gen, I didn't offer anything else. Didn't do e-com. All I wanted to do was lead gen because I knew that that would get me better results. So I just approached people, businesses which I felt were bricks and mortar businesses, tapped into my inner circle, and I started to win clients. And I actually had people pay me. I then didn't have a fucking clue how to take payments. Like, do I take a credit card? Do I get PayPal? I had no idea. So I was kind of learning how to take Stripe payments and send an invoice. I never sent an invoice in my life. Um, so going from not knowing, not being on Facebook to then having it, seeing some content of some really good people online to then implementing it. Once you win your first two or three, you are very much underway. And it just went from there. And then obviously me and you, for those who don't know, you know me, me and Harry, then I actually won a client that I really, going back to talking about outsourcing, I really didn't know how to implement a couple of things this client wanted me to do. I knew roughly, but I I needed help. I really needed help. And I refused to outsource work overseas. Absolutely refused to do it because it just didn't seem healthy and a viable option for me. So I, as Harry is so accessible on Instagram, I DM'd him saying, hey man, like I've got this client. I need some help with it because I don't really understand some of the some of the bits he wants and I could do with your expertise. Me and Harry got on a call. We then worked jointly with this with this client. Um, and that client was a really fun brand. It was an e-com brand. And that's why I wanted Harry involved because I was just doing out and out lead gen. And, and this was an e-com client. And I was like, fuck, like what the fuck am I going to do with an e-com client? I have no idea how to do this. Reached out to Harry. Harry had plenty of experience with it. We teamed up on one account. We then got another account, which is e-com. So that's two. And then we won a third. Then we won a fourth. Then we decided <laughs> that we didn't ever want to do digital marketing with that, like, cause it can be a bit lonely. If you're doing this on your own, a little bit of a disclaimer, it's kind of a lonely world. Entrepreneurship is an incredibly lonely and, world. And we were kind of a powerhouse. Yeah. We were kind of a power, like the, the we, we results were, we were getting brought, together. Yeah. Cause I brought so much more to the table and, and then Harry, and then Harry brought way more in other aspects than me to the table. So as a joint, so basically in a nutshell, we went from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we merged our agencies together and we created a power agency and then we went seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and on it goes and, and your salary goes um, and your enjoyment of the job. And you, you've then got a, a wingman that, that is with you. So that was kind of my story, um, which I, I, I think people, some people, you know, and I'm, I'm nearly, I'm 40 next year. So when, when all this happened, I'm in my late thirties. So Harry is in his early 20s. So there's a there's a 15, 16, 17 year swing between the two of us, um, which shows that it's never too late. Like I know people will be watching this and thinking, oh, you know, I want to create 10K. I want to make 10K online. How am I going to do it? I'm nearly 40. It's too late for me. I'm over the hill and stuff. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's how competent you are. And actually, the level of good is so low that if you know what you're doing and you really learn it in the right way and you have maybe maybe have mentors, mentors aren't essential, but they do rapidly, rapidly um, accelerate your success rate. But like it's, there's no like Gary V would say, I watch a lot of Gary v stuff like you're young, dude. Like I still think I'm young. Um, you are young, but I think that, that I there's no you don't have to, it's never too late. And I think I proved that by being in my late thirties with two kids going through a divorce, um, uh, you know, and all that stuff. And you think, Christ, am I, am I, is this a young person's game? Am I going to be able to do it? And then you just do because the benchmark's low and, and it, it worked out. And that's, and that's our story. That's my story with how I, how it became and me and Harry then yeah. have a power agency, which is, performing not above and beyond my wildest dreams but it is mine mate <laughs> i said in the last one is, i know i didn't think it was possible it is sensational what you can achieve when you really work hard and you've got the right mindset um yeah shall i shall i take just, my story yeah I, and i think at this point that's my story and i think people might find that really really interesting but harry's is is actually kind of quite different 
my, it's so different to mine. Um, but Harry, go on, tell them like how it yeah, works. So mine's I love mine's kind of the opposite of what top, and I, I'm sure majority, the, not majority, but there's a strong percentage of these people that are going to be 17 to 25 who have been hit with every possible form to make money online. Forex, drop shipping, I don't know, trading, eBay, Amazon, Shopify, every type of method to make online, Amazon FBA, everything. And I've tried it all. I've literally tried every method to make money online. I started trying to make money online when I was 16. So 16 year old Harry saw all of these different types of ads um, of, you know, courses to sell different methods to make online i was literally i remember when i was 14 i used to google pretty much every day when i got home from school how to make money online or how to how to make money as a 14 year old how to make money as a 16 year old and just tried literally everything there is i try and I'm, i was successful in some of them forex didn't make any money because i didn't really give it a good go and this isn't slating on any of those methods guys i've talked about this in the past and i get loads of messages saying why are you hating on forex why are you hating? i'm not hating this isn't me hating on any of them this is just telling you my honest experience with the different methods that i tried forex didn't make any money because i was just following shitty trades that people were doing by the time i put them they'd already moved up and either cashed out or just a load of shit didn't try it well, i tried it but wasn't successful tried uh, drop shipping on a Shopify store, pushing Facebook ads to it, got a few sales, didn't make much money. Did Amazon and eBay drop shipping and made a fair bit of money, was making like a few thousand a month, which was fucking unreal for a 17, 18 year old at the time. Like I was over the moon with it. So that is, that is good. So <laughs> was, re was re really happy with that. Then, and I've always been this person that doesn't want to work with someone. Worked since I was 13 in different, you know, restaurants, jobs, not, I don't think that, I don't think it was even legal the way I was doing. I was getting paid like three, three pound 90 an hour when I was 14 on like ice cream stands. I was always like searching for how to make money off my own back. Um, so that was always a constant hunt. Then Amazon and eBay dropship and kind of the strategy I was using for it kind of stopped working. So then eventually, you know, it was exploring the Facebook ads, had experience with running Facebook ads because was running the Shopify stores and thought, right, I've got this skill. There must be a way that I can kind of utilize this for businesses because other businesses have, you know, the main problem with the dropship and the Shopify was not finding the right products, but the marketing was still good. So why don't I use that marketing on successful businesses? So I kind of like, you know, when you invent, you invent something in your head and then you realize it's real. Like I remember I did it with Uber once. I thought, why don't people just pay me to go somewhere I'm already going? I was like, oh, fuck, Uber exists. That's kind of what happened with SMA. I was like, oh, that, 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 that does exist. So let me explore into it. And unlike you, had no sales experience, had nothing. So I didn't sign a client for six months. Like every single day I was doing outreach, outreach, outreach. Didn't sign a client for six months. Didn't really have many, you know, strong meetings. And that's because I was just doing it wrong. Um, and then just out of just pure research on YouTube, Google, you know, following different people, didn't take a course, just figuring out in my own head, like logistically how I'm going to do this. And then eventually got, you know, a meeting from cold calling by suck, like made a, tick, a reel and a TikTok the other day about it in the, in the first podcast, eventually got a meeting. And then from then it was kind of like, right, I've got one, let me get more, got more and more. And then you reached out, um, and then kind of, you know, take up from where, where you left off. And that's kind of my story. So I kind of tried every possible way to make money online and then ended up with SMMA. And the reason why SMMA I think works for me is because it's most like a real business. It's not like a, for the other, for the other methods, for me, at least it was very much like gambling, like Forex kind of gambling. Yeah, FBA, like FBA, you kind, yeah, it? FBA, you kind, FBA and drop shipping and stuff. You're kind of gambling in the sense that you you put time into a product that might not work. Or whereas SMA, you're building solid relationships with real people, real businesses that can pay you forever if you do a good job. That's why I think it worked for me. Um, and I, and yeah, that's that's kind of the journey, and then never looked back since really. Um, but I, I think the reason why I found success is I just didn't, I didn't give up with the different methods. I tried everything, failed, then just moved on to the next. Cause, cause going to a normal job was just never an option. It was never like oh, this, I never had in my brain, if SMA doesn't work, I'll just get a job. That wasn't, I was, I was, I just thought, oh, I'll just find someone else. Like I, I refused. 
I think your I think your journey and my journey in, in the SMMA. And we say SMMA, by the way, like social media marketing agency, <clears throat> it is kind of more digital marketing now because you have to use other other ways of getting getting results. So, um, but it's, a, yeah, I think your journey is so impressive for someone of your age, but it also showcases that, you know, we've got students in our academy, some are, are 16, 17. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, and then you've got people who are, in the same bracket as me you can be like the early 40s and mid 40s so i think it's it, your journey is incredible in the sense that, you know you're i'm sure your parents are massively proud of, of your journey and your determination to succeed and your decency towards other people and clients and and, I, and students and things like that and i think yours is such a flagship of what can be done and i think mine is too to to degree way yeah, well, you know, if people are in sales and they hate their nine to five job, which I think in all honesty, I think I think there's some people out there who love their job. I really yeah. do think they got a good boss. They enjoy what they're doing. They enjoy having a company car. They're very content and happy earning two and a half grand a month or two grand a month. But I think if you're looking to to get to earn more money, even even this is a side hustle, it does work and it can be so achievable. And I think one people, once people realize that the, the, the potential that you can have in front of you, um, it becomes very, very exciting, but it's never too late. And, and I'd love to, I love your story about failing because you've got such a great story about how you failed at the beginning. Yeah. And, and, and you get, and this is something which people get so down about, you know, I've not signed a client. I've been doing it three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks you know yours was was uh, what 25 weeks yeah, 52 months 52 weeks in a year i yeah, hate, that one. I, hate that one I said it in the last one where people say i've done sent 25 messages rang 10 people have not signed one well that's you've been running an agency for an hour because i could do what you've done in an hour like you can't run an agency for an hour not get any clients and think this doesn't work like i tried for six months every single day and didn't but that's because i didn't know what i was doing i'm sure like that academy, then that's funny. That academy member that we keep talking about who joined the other day and has already booked like 10 meetings now after two yeah. days of cold calling. And I'm like, I, I say to him all the time, I'm like, mate, if you told me that when I first started, I would be fucking over the moon. Like six months I waited to be in a position you're in for two days yeah. just because you've listened to our mistakes and you know what to do now. And I think, and I'm going back to what you said, I think people need to use SMMA in different ways in the sense that you can design how you run your business. You can design what services you offer. You can design what type of clients you deal with, how you, what kind of business you want. Do you want a, you know, we're, we're two people that want an agency that's bringing in 200 grand a month. A lot of people don't want that. Some people just want an extra thousand a month, one or two clients that they, so they can take their kids away at the weekend or people want just four grand a month so they can quit their job and get loads of extra free time with their family or or to yeah. look after an ill parent or whatever like you can design it however however you want it doesn't have yeah. to be this high you know high flying agency that you and i strive for and a lot of other people do that's just down to our preference and and you know yeah i i think one that if you're looking at a side hustle this like sma is a definite side hustle but also the, one of the easiest ones is social media management which we offer as part of our agency anyway but i'm always amazed about how much you can charge just to manage someone's instagram pinterest and and facebook i'm, I'm amazed and people will pay well go and raise depending on how many posts like, some people will pay like 500 pounds so this is sterling british sterling so 650 dollars a month for someone to post content for them and stay on top of their socials because businesses don't want to do it and even just offering that just winning three clients like I, there's a friend of mine who i know um who approached me and said how can i make a bit of extra money she makes two thousand pounds additional on the side, managing someone's like different businesses, socials. One is a local bar, like um, it's, a, it's a really nice bar and they have amazing food and stuff. And they send her all the pictures they take and she schedules them out. She, she get hashtags them correctly. She posts them on the stories. She does all the management for them because they just haven't got time. We've got two business owners who are rushed off their feet and they haven't got time. They need someone to do it and make it look really nice. 500 pound a month for that. And she's got, she's got over 
five clients and she makes 2000 a month in a, in another job, which she's in where she makes like 1500 a month. So she's already making more money, but you add the two together and she doesn't really add too much more time, but I'm always, and she's making like three, grand, three and a half grand a month. And you think yeah, if you pay a few extra bills and you're, you know, the cost of fuel and the cost of living in the UK, particularly in Europe is going up dramatically. You do have to find things that you can kind of enjoy that bring in some extra cash and income and an smma like we do is is it that is a high paying skill and it's rapid money when you get into it but you can you can dabble with social media management definitely and make some more money than actually some people earn in a year um based on just doing it right definitely well mate i think that's a perfect place to wrap up yeah absolutely well we'll see everyone on the next on the next episode which will be next week indeed apple music spotify youtube tiktok um, shorts reels yeah all the shebang i think if people are looking for if people are looking for for any more then obviously follow harry at harry underscore sma my instagram is tom underscore sma um you can check out our tiktok and youtube channel too and like harry said it'd be gone on apple um for spotify and you can download the podcast you can just listen to it in the car or you know in your own time so you can get an understanding but lots more of this to come and we're going to be getting into some major sales topics as well and, and some sales information about how to when someone says you're too expensive how you handle that and there's a real clear easy formula to do that and i'm going to teach people how to do that and even when you're making cold calls there's some, some hidden tricks you can do to make cold calls and um and we're going to talk about that over the next over the next coming weeks about just getting into more nitty gritty yeah uh, on some of the stuff that people hate so yeah so and if you've not lost if you've not watched the um the previous one there'll be a link um probably there to to watch the last one then we'll go from there perfect cool